Okay, so uh, today we continue. It is chapter seven. Chapter seven is managing human resources. Uh, businesses, let's explain, this is not in the textbook, depend on two things. One is called the process, how things get done. And the other important thing is people. Some businesses are very dependent on processes, and other people are dependent on, oh sorry, other businesses are dependent on people. Example, you have business, restaurant, with everything is process. Now, the word process means step by step by step. You do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. They tell you exactly what to do. The example is McDonald's. When you go to work in McDonald's, they tell you, you do this and this and this and this, okay? And for the other job, you do number one, number two, number three, number four. So in McDonald's, you have a very strict process. When you have a fixed well-defined process, people are not important. You can easily take somebody out and put somebody else to substitute for them. So people in businesses with process are not very important. You have other businesses where people are extremely important. The example where people are important are university. In university, the processes which university goes are not very important. What is important is professors. Good professors make a good university. Example of another business where you have an important process is supermarket. In supermarket, very important process is checkout at cashier. Very important. Okay? It's got to be quick, it's got to be fast. So, supermarket is not very dependent on people. Same thing 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven, the most important part is the cashier. So, you need an important, you know, the cashier is very important for the business. Now, restaurant is generally mixed. Half of it is important on the process, and the other half is important for a restaurant on the people. The process, most important process in the restaurant is taking order from customer. What is the process? Customer shows up, you bring the customer in. Step number one, you give him a table. Step number two, okay? Step number three is you give him a menu. Step number four, you offer a drink. Step number five, you give them two, three, four minutes to choose from menu, right? Step number six, you take order, okay? Step number seven, you go in the kitchen to make the order somehow, right? The kitchen gets the order, you give the order to the kitchen. Then step number eight, the meal gets cooked and ready. And here's another one, step number nine, notification. The kitchen notifies you to tell you the meal is ready. And step number 10, the waiter takes it from the kitchen and delivers it to the customer. Now, in the restaurant, payment and cashier, not very important, okay? The important part is the order, okay? Getting the order right. Now, that's how you get the process. That's why restaurants don't care about waitress, okay? If waitress no good, you just throw and get yourself another one, okay? Because you just tell them, you do this, 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 and this, and the waitress can begin immediately. Now, restaurant is very dependent on the cook. You call him the chef, right? So, restaurant is dependent on one important process, which is taking order 
from customer, but it's also very dependent on the person. And the person is the cook or the chef. You have to have a good chef to get a good restaurant. Okay? Same thing with university. You may have a perfect process, rules about everything. If professors are bad, university is bad. Okay? Now, what about supermarket? Supermarket, you don't need a lot. You train a cashier for one day or two days, you tell them these are the steps you do, and they follow the procedure, they follow the process. Now, so, which businesses now are dependent on people? And that's where we get, we get to human resources. And human resource represents the people and their knowledge and experience in a business, okay? And the short answer is businesses which do not easily depend on a specific process. You don't have simple, easy steps, okay? Example will be the cooking, cooking in a restaurant. You don't have easy steps in cooking, okay? Teaching in a class, different courses. You don't have easy steps, okay? What about a hotel? Can you have a lot of steps? Can you have steps for everything, for cleaning the room? Can you make a process and a step? Step one, step two, step three, step four for cleaning a room in a hotel? The answer is yes, of course. Very, very easy. You tell, you change the towels, you change the dough, so you change this, you change the sheets. So in a hotel, you can have a very good process. You don't have process in a mice company. For example, you want to have a wedding, okay? Wedding is special. You need to design the wedding, okay? You do not have process for the wedding. You need someone, which you guys call with creative thinking, okay? Someone who will design it. You don't have a very, very specific process, okay? Same thing if you want to have a conference. So every conference is unique. You don't have... So for hotel, the process is very important. For conference, for weddings, for events, for meetings, the people are important, okay? So many 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 businesses depend on the people if they have the right people the business will succeed if they got the wrong people the business will not succeed many people depend so much that they must have the right people example with a process is producing the ipad ipad is manufactured in china you give them all the specifications and say step one, two, three, four, and have a manufacturing process. The design of the iPad, design, is made in the US and it requires people. So whenever you have to design something, people are important. In architecture, people are very important. You want to build a bridge, people are very important. You want to design a building, people are very important. So all of this stuff is about which business people are important and which business people are not very important. Now, they're going to tell you, oh, in every business people are important. That's true. But in some businesses, people are way more important and in others they're not very important okay in others the process and step by step is important okay mcdonald's is very successful because it does not depend on people it depends on the process it depends on the steps it depends on the formula and if one person no good, you just hire another one, and that's it, okay? So, 
Chapter 7 is about human resource. And human resource means people working in a company, in business. So, key components of human resource. So, which are the key components? What else we got? Identifying and selecting competent employees. So, I just explained, if you have a restaurant, very, very, very important to choose the chef right. For the waitress, not very important, okay? Means waitress no good, you just say go home, you get the next one, okay? But with the chef, not very easy to find one, okay? Same thing for the university. If the cleaning lady no good, okay, you can easily say go home, next one, okay? But for professors, not very easy to find professor teaching management or finance or accounting, okay, or business, not so easy. And finally, how you know, employees are provided with needed skills and knowledge, we call this training, on the job training, okay? You can get a waitress, for example, you can just go and be waitress in three days, okay? But you cannot go and become cook in three days. You just don't learn cooking in three days, okay? But you can learn, well, what about hotel reception? Can you learn hotel reception in one month? No? Oh, they can learn in one week. Hotel reception, no. Very, very, very difficult, okay? Not very difficult. You can work hotel reception, learn in one week, and you need two or three months of experience, and you're ready, okay? Not too difficult, not too difficult. When I was working in Macau, they get people on the reception, no experience, no training, nothing. They just get them from the Philippines, okay? Philippines, there's a nice girl, she wants to say, oh, I want the job. They say, okay, you begin at reception. You do this, you do this, you do this, okay? And after a week, you say, now you also do this, this, this. And within maybe one month, she already learns and knows everything. All right, strategies for retaining competent, high-performing employees. There is a general rule in all businesses about good employees. Good employees always leave and find a better job. And the bad employees stay. That's the general rule. It happens in every business. In every business there is always a better employer and there's always a better job. And what happens is most good employees always leave and find a better job. That's the reality. They always find a higher salary. They always find better conditions because they are good. And bad employees cannot find a job. So before, when I was working at another university, the university was really bad and all foreign professors didn't like it. Well, guess what happened? They hired five of us. And at the end of the first semester, three of us found another job. So we got there in one month. We say, ah, this place is terrible, don't want to work here. So, on the second month, we started looking for a job. And on the third month, we found a job. So, out of five people, the three good ones leave after one semester. Number four leave at the end of the year. And only one person stayed. And the reason one person stayed was not that the person wanted to stay. The reason was that one person did not find another job. If they could find another job, they will leave too. You understand? That's very, and that's how it always works everywhere, okay? Good employees always leave. And this is about 
retain. To retain means to keep them working for you. Because good employees soon enough come and say, oh, I want bigger salary, I want nicer office, I want flexible work hours, okay? And if you say, no, you cannot, what they say, okay, I'm going to find another job where they offer me, okay? And then you have some contemporary issues. You already see for everything you have contemporary issues. All right, so the key components, let's see what are these key components. Oh, this is, you see, not a very good chart. And we'll be going through, yeah, now you have a camera, it's called Zoom, right? You're learning. So, it says here, introduction and selection of competent employees. So, the first important part is you need to find good employees. This is this place. And this piece here has three steps. Number one, let's see what they say over here. You need to have strategic human resource planning. So step number one, you need to have a strategic plan about people. So every business must have two strategies. One is about the process, which I was explaining, and the other one is about people. And you got to have a strategic plan about people, and that's step number one. Step number two is recruiting. How you actually get the people in, how you actually find you gotta find them, okay? Step number three is selection. So, you have to find a chef, okay? And if you need to find a chef, you gotta have advertising or somehow. And then you got five people who want the job. How are you gonna give it? Or you need a waitress. Do you need it to a waitress because she's beautiful? Or give it to a waitress because she says, oh, I have been a waitress for five years. I know everything about waitressing, okay? So, how you select? So, if you pay attention here, step number one, planning. Step number two, you see the arrow going down. Step number two, recruitment. Step number three, selection. Step number four, you hire the person, you got to give him orientation orientation so they come in for example i arrived here two months ago okay and they say okay well this is the place where you sleep okay and they say okay this is the office this is the academic office this is the faculty dean this is the department chair okay this is the photocopier this is where the toilet is right Oh, this is your computer. This is the copy machine. This is how you use the copy machine, okay? So they give you an orientation step by step. After orientation, there is training and I think they call it development. Yes, training and development. Your camera, you're zooming slowly in, right? Yes. Yeah, you're getting good at it. So, right now, your camera woman, right, she is getting training. She is getting training on how to use a camera, right? And using camera is not very complicated, right? It just has to be. So, training is, so, besides general education, in this class, some of you, some, maybe not you, some of you get training in the camera, okay? You get a little bit of experience, okay? It's a helpful. Sometimes you go to a wedding and maybe you take pictures, you take video, okay? So training is important for every job, okay? 
Now, if it's highly skilled, maybe you don't do, they don't do training for you. For example, me as a professor, they don't provide for me training. I do my own training. I stick my own books, I read my own stuff, I read my own articles, I do my own training. I don't need the university to train me, and I don't expect them to do that, okay? I do want to. But if you have a waitress, maybe you have to train her. If you have, let's say, office uh, receptionist, two of you, hey, come on, leave that little toy, okay? Yeah, I know. Okay. Okay. PowerPoint. Okay. So, training. Next step is performance management. This means you have to decide is employee good employee or not good employee. Next month or maybe next week, they're going to make performance management for me. We call it performance evaluation. And in performance evaluation, department chair and dean will come to you and ask you, hey, is this guy good? Do you want him to teach or you don't want him to teach, okay? And if you say good, okay, I stay here and teach in October. If you say not good, this means good, right? And this means not good, right? This means bad. You know, this means live and this means die, okay? So, if you say good, I stay. And if you say not good, not good, okay? Then they say, sorry, you have to go, all right? So, this is called performance evaluation. Same thing for waitress, same thing for cook, okay? Same thing for receptionist for every single job, for every single employee, you must have performance evaluation. You need to have specific measures about how you're going to evaluate the employee. And then you have, what is this? Very difficult to read. Compensation and benefits. Compensation means how much money you pay, how much is the salary. But part also is how many hours you work. Do you have flexible work hours? Do you have vacation? If, for example, you're a mother and have a little baby, if you gotta go to the hospital, can you easily take one day off and go to hospital. For professors, not very easy. They don't easily replace one professor with another. What about cleaning lady? Very easy to replace. You get another cleaning lady to do the work for one day. No problem, okay? Same thing, if you have three or four waitresses in restaurant, okay? Very easy, one waitress to take a day off and the other three continue to work, okay? In a restaurant, if you have one chef, Okay, you can't just, one chef can't just go and say, oh, I got work or I got something else because someone's got to do the kitchen. Now, if I have three or four chefs, then one of them can take a day off, okay? So, here it's about compensation and benefit. So, benefit could be work, or flexible work hours, benefit is vacation. Very important benefit in the United States is Healthcare. Do they provide for you some health care? Okay. Now, an important benefit for me in this university is they give me a little dorm. Okay, well it's actually a very nice good apartment, which is three minutes from the office. Okay? So dorm is very important because it makes life very convenient. I don't need to have a car, I don't need to drive back and drive forth, okay? Uh, we have class in the morning, 8.30, okay? I can wake up at 8 o'clock, 8.25, I can leave, in, uh, leave my apartment, 8.25, and 8.30, I can be in the classroom, okay? Don't have to drive for 20, 30, 40 minutes, so very convenient. 
So this is a big, big benefit, okay? They give us also a little bit of a health care benefit. So these are all the things. If you want to keep employees, you got to give them good compensation and good benefits. If they don't get good compensation and benefits, they leave. It's very simple. And the last thing is safety and health. For university, not very important. But for other jobs, maybe more important. For a hotel, probably not very important. You don't have many safety problems. You don't have, have health problems. But if you have a building, you have a construction, in construction, you need safety, okay? You need, you have some health problems. If you're building roads, you get big machines. Safety is very important. In a hospital, whether you're a nurse or doctor, safety is very important. Because you work with disease, you can get sick people easily, okay? So, the way they do it in the textbook is the following. They call this step one, planning. Step two, recruitment. Step three, selection. Step four, orientation. Step five, training. Step six, performance. Step seven, compensation. And step eight, which this is ongoing, safety and health. Let's see what we have. Okay, this is called the HRM, standing for, here's up there, well, I'm not too. H means human resource management, okay? So, we call it the HRM process. You can also zoom out completely, zoom out. So, HRM process. So, I just explained to you a process. And process means, process means a sequence of steps which you follow. The sequence, step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six, okay? Now, what's the process of teaching here? The process of teaching here is we both come to class. I, step number one, I teach you with lecture. Step number two, we discuss examples about restaurant, hotel. Step number three, exam. We call it, exam is evaluation, okay? So that's the process. And step number four is compensation. What is compensation? Compensation is the grade which I give you for your work, okay? So, this is the process, and you go through these steps, okay? Same thing in McDonald's. Same thing for waitress when customer comes in. Same is step one, two, three, process for when a customer comes to a hotel at the reception and they want to check in a room, okay? They have a check-in process. They come, you check ID, they fill out form, okay? You show them the room, they say, okay, I take the room, you agree on the price, okay? Next step is send bellboy with the luggage, okay? You show them the TV, okay? air conditioning remote, okay, give them the key, and whatever, you know, the steps are, okay, so you have a specific process. So this is called the HRM process. Okay, let's see what we have here. There's also some legal stuff I will not be discussing here. Okay. The legal environment, you have to know the legal environment. Legal environment in the United States is one, so U.S. has specific laws. 
United Kingdom has different laws. Japan has different laws, okay? My own country, Bulgaria has different laws. Different laws are very, very strong in labor laws, we call them in Germany, okay? Very strong labor law in Germany. One of the strongest will be in France. So, you have to know the labor law in the country in which you operate. So, if you are working and operating in Thailand, you need to know your labor laws. Now, they will teach all of these laws and what happens in the U.S. doesn't concern us. You don't have to study and you don't have to prepare the laws in the legal environment. I'm not going to be asking for it because it's about the U.S., okay? So, no laws. Let's see. Affirmative action is about favoring specific groups of people which government thinks we should help. Example will be in the United States, they call them minorities. For example, in the United States, people, society believe that you should help African American people. So, if you have a white candidate for a job and a black person, okay, and the black person is okay, you give the job to the black person. Same thing, disadvantaged group is generally women, okay? And they usually don't get the job. So affirmative action says, if you have a man, if you have a woman, you want to choose the woman because that's the policy. That's what the government wants to do, okay? It wants to help women more because men can usually get job more easily you help women get a job okay so that's a very common it is the law in the united states in bulgaria no such law i don't know if you guys have in germany in germany you have affirmative action where the government tries to get help for some people maybe you have policy for older workers, workers between 60 and 65. It is very, very difficult for someone, male at the age of 62 or 64, find a job because they think it's too old. Or for women, age of 58, very, 58, very difficult to find a job. So some governments say, oh, we would like to help some old women find Okay? So, you have to know if your government requires affirmative action. Affirmative action means choosing a specific group of people which the government thinks it is important to help and favor. Uh, maybe you have affirmative action for young mothers if a woman has a six-month-old or one-year-old baby, they say, oh, we should help her and give her a job, for example, whether it's cleaning or waitress or whatever. You need to know the law. The law is different for every single country. It's about law, okay? Let's see what else we have. Uh, in the United States, you also have about job discrimination and discrimination is you favor somebody because you like them okay you favor oh you're a white person you have a good you know we're going to give you the job you're a black person no good okay this is called job discrimination sometimes you may discriminate against the old people the guys in old don't work Okay. Sometimes they can discriminate against the young people because they say, oh, young people don't know how to work. Now the young generation is spoiled, right? They don't work too hard. The only thing they want to work is Facebook, right? So, sometimes 
you will have some sort of discrimination. The most common discrimination actually is young women with baby. Why? Because baby all is a problem. You hire somebody, a woman, to work. But if she's got a young little baby, she says, oh, my baby's sick, I gotta go back home, I gotta take care of baby. It's a hospital and problem, you know? And the next day you expect her to come to work, she calls on the phone, oh, my baby is very sick, I can't come to work. And the employer says, no more women, hire men. I care, I don't care about women, okay? This happens very often when you need work done, okay? That's very common, it's called job discrimination. And not because women are bad, because for different circumstances. Well, when you have a husband and wife, husband still goes to work. So he's a reliable worker. Some women, especially with small babies, are considered to be unreliable, and some say no good, okay? So that's called discrimination employment discrimination. Let's see what else we got. Uh, yeah, you have other things, not very important. Section number two. You want to take a little break? Yes or no? Okay.